Live broadcast right now on building up marriage and family. I'm sorry, uh, there was a little delayed, and uh, so this is an important message for everyone, and uh, and it hopefully that you would apply it to your life. This is very important for Christian life and also for ministries. Okay, right now I'm going to first talk about common problems in family. Common problems in family. A lot of families have problems. The reason is because they don't understand some principles of uh, marriage. One big problem is that because there is a uh, difference between male and female. Now this uh, was created by God. The difference in male and female has a reason. The reason is that male generally are more interested in action, in doing things, in direction. And female are more interested in relationship and family so that uh, the wives can take care of the family and the husbands will take care of uh, work and business. So that's God's creation. But after uh, people sin, after men sin, what happened is, uh, then men, they don't have the love that God has planned for them to have. They don't have strong love. And then the wife uh, becomes very, has a strong sense of responsibility. And then what happens is, they might nag the husband, they may yell at the husband when the husband doesn't do what she likes him to do. So let's look at the differences and all these problems, the problem of the differences of the male and female can be corrected when we have the love of God, when we have the patience and the submission in Jesus Christ. Okay, first look, let's look at here, the uh, male is more interested in action so that men are uh, usually, you know, most of the uh, achievements in the world uh, are achieved by male, although female are doing a lot too nowadays, but still uh, generally, hus uh, husband males are more interested in action, in work. And then females are more interested in family and relationship. And that's why there is a family relationship and love and care. Um, a lot of times husbands might forget about the family, might forget about details of the needs of the family members. But the wife always has uh, uh, remember the needs. That's God's created nature, so that um, so that they can work together to build up the the family. So uh, that's the creation of God. And then, male don't like to talk about feelings. Male don't like to talk about feelings. Uh, uh, and then they. They like to think through their feelings. Now, this has an advantage. The advantage is that males are not as affected by feelings. Uh, for, for females, they are affected by feelings more after um, man has sinned. And uh, so, men, you know, they can manage their feelings, but then they like to hide the feelings. And then females have to talk about the feelings. If they don't talk, talk about it, someone says it's like a pressure cooker. That uh, the emotion builds up stronger and stronger and stronger. And then it would affect the, uh, uh, the female would, you know, blow up or yell. Um, okay, and then for male, they have to learn before they can love. Okay. They uh, have to learn before they can love. It's, we female have a stronger, uh, stronger um, motivation to love, to care. But male have to learn to love. It's not the first nature to love and to care. So that's something they have to learn. And then the female, they're willing to love, but they also want to be loved. That's why wives generally take care of the children, even a lot of times after divorce, the uh, wives still take care of the, the family, the children. At the same time, they want to be loved. Uh, for male, 
uh, although all people need to be loved, males need to be loved too, but then they don't. Um, but uh, you know, they if they are not loved, they are not as you know, they are not as um, affected. They are not as affected, and then um, now for marriage. When male and female enter marriage, the male say, now I have a wife, I have someone to take care of my family, I, have, uh, uh, I will have children, and so they think that that's all the, uh, to the marriage. They just think, I, you know, I stay at home, I eat at home, and they think this is all. But then uh, the wife expect more. They expect after marriage, there will be a lot of romance and care and listening and response to her feelings and males say this is not necessary we don't need this to survive for male they want to work on you know what they want to do but then female they want to be to have a loving relationship that's why a lot of female are disappointed uh, after a while because they say how come we're not loving each other how come you're not caring for me and then males they easily forget family responsibility. They would, uh, you know, like they forget about the children, whether they need any food. But then the, uh, the female has strong responsibility toward the family. And so uh, usually it's the wife who remember, you know, the needs of the children, the condition of children and what they need to do. And if any ch child is sick, the wife remember it much more than the husband. And and then because the wife has a strong sense of responsibility when the husband doesn't care about the family or the husband doesn't talk to her because she she like to uh, to have good communication to have good care so when she doesn't get it what happens is she will be you know uh, she will nag she will have a tendency to control the condition um, they will, you know, then they would, they would feel very unhappy. They would feel very unhappy, and then, uh, then uh, she would nag. You know, she thinks that if she talked to the, uh, to the husband, uh, if he doesn't listen, he will say it once, twice, three times, four times, five times. She will keep telling the husband what to do, and so she has a tendency to nag, and then. The husband doesn't want to be nagged. The husband uh, feels very bad about it. And so what happened is then, uh, because of the difference, because after the fall of mankind, then what happened is then uh, the female doesn't get satisfied. And the female say, the husband doesn't love me enough, uh, doesn't care about me. And also because many cultures have a tendency to suppress the woman. And I, I noticed that many cultures also has this problem. For instance, uh, the husband and the man will eat together. And the uh, wife and the children will eat in the kitchen. And they think this is submission. But what happened is this is not following God's plan. God's plan is to love your wife as Christ has loved the church. So what happened is the husband doesn't love the have much love for the wife and the family and the wife feels very unhappy and then she would nag and then she would blow up and then she would be very unhappy and unsupportive of the husband and even try to do things to you know to make the husband feel bad and uh, so this uh, when we understand this then we realize that uh, that's the reason why there's so much problem uh, in marriage Okay, now, uh, people hurt each other easily in families. Uh, why does that happen? Because first, people don't have much love, because people don't learn to care. And then, secondly, they yell at each other. Uh, they yell at each other, they criticize, they nag, they, uh, so they, uh, it's easy for people to yell at each other and say, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, and to nag. And I have counseled couples, and then very easily, even in a counseling session, 
uh, one person would say, he never did it, he never uh, paid attention to me, he never listened to me. So, um, so it's easy for people to criticize and say the other person didn't do it. And then they don't communicate and then they don't listen. They don't, there's not much communication because, many, because after the fall of mankind, people have not learned to communicate and listen and care. And so they don't uh, listen to people and they don't respond to people. They just say what I want. They never listen to uh, what the other person wants. So, uh, and also communication need to learn. We need to learn it. Now, in, uh, before the fall, all people have natural love for people and they, uh, they never criticize, they never make the other person feel bad. But after the fall, we have this tendency to hurt each other. So there's a lot of problem. And then number four, because many people don't appreciate each other, they, don't, they take things for granted. Say, you have to take care of me, you have to do things for me. And then they neglect each other. They, uh, they, you know, they say, well, uh, I have too much to do. I have no time for you. So they neglect each other. And then number six, they get emotional. So when they don't get what they want, they get angry, they're frustrated, or they hide the emotions. That's another way to be emotional. They hide the emotions. They suppress the emotions. They are frustrated and they are unhappy and they look unhappy. When they look unhappy, then it also hurts the other person. And then number seven, it forces people to change, to do things. So that's another problem that people can, uh, in a family, they force the other person to change. You know, why didn't you do this? And then they yell, you have to do this, you have to do this. And then they want the other person to disappear. So it becomes worse and worse. And then they say, uh, if the wife says, oh, I have to go to my parents' home, the husband say in his heart, oh, I'm very happy. She's going away for a few days. I'm very happy. Then I have a few quiet days. So that's a problem because of mankind's sin. So it causes all these kind of problems. Then I'm sure that we all are aware of problems like this. As Christians, there are ways to correct this condition. Okay, now, uh, people follow their sinful nature easily. The first is that they react to people the way they treat us. It's very easy for people just to react to people. You yell at me, I'll yell, at you, uh, yell back at you. You, sh you show, show emotion, I will show emotion too. So they react to people, they uh, respond naturally. And when people respond naturally, Generally, it's not out of love. Generally, it's full of anger and frustration. And then they just want to get what they want to get. They just want to, uh, actually all people, they want to get something. For instance, uh, when a male, before he gets married, he would say to his friend, Oh, I, get, I, I found a, uh, a girl very pretty, very attractive. She, she's uh, nice to me. She loves me. She's always talking about what she, he gets from the, he's always talking about what he gets from the girl. And then the girl would say, oh, I met uh, a man, he's very nice to me. Because in a time when a, a man is chasing after a woman, this is like his project. We need to understand this. As a man, when they chase after a woman, it's a task to chase a woman to get a wife. So he would put in a lot of effort. But after the task is done, the man would lose the motivation to put in more effort to the woman. And, uh, and he discovered, even in a time of dating, he discovered that the woman now wants me to pay attention to her, listen to her, spend time with her. And the man say, this is not my nature. I just want to do my things. I don't want to talk and listen and respond to your feelings. So a lot of men don't have that mentality to build up relationship. And he just want to get a, a pretty woman, uh, someone, uh, a lot of times men look for sex. They want, uh, they want someone to have sex and then have children. Now for a woman, she want uh, someone who, who uh, will love her and uh, pay attention to her and have steady income, is a nice person. 
Now, when a man is chasing after a woman, he would do everything possible to please the woman. So the woman thinks he's always a loving person. But after the marriage, then she finds out that, nor even before the marriage, she finds out that the, the man doesn't really pay attention to her that much, doesn't want to communicate that much. So that both sides want to get someone the type they want. But very often, they forget that they need to give. They need to make the other person feel happy. Now, when a, a girl before marriage, uh, she would always want to please the, the man and then uh, she would uh, be very nice to the man and uh, try to uh, uh, be kind to her all the time. But what's the difference after marriage? And many men say, before marriage, she's a, you know, uh, a nice, pretty girl. And after the marriage, she became a nagging woman. What happened is, because women have a strong sense of responsibility. After the marriage, she always think about the need of the family. Now this is necessary. Think about the need of the family and her need of being loved. And so uh, she starts to request more. Actually, most men find out that after dating for a while, the women start to uh, request and uh, demand more attention, more time. And then the men refuse to give it. So then the, the women start to nag and complain. So that's what happened is most people want to get what they want. And people are self-centered, that they, they center on themselves. They just think about their own needs. So they don't think about the need of the other person. They don't think about the feeling of the person. And then they don't think of the feelings and needs of the other person. That what the feelings are, they don't say, well, how do you feel now? How do you, uh, when this happened, how do you feel now? And they think of the, uh, they don't think of the needs. Uh, they need to be loved and cared for and uh, talked to in a nice way. And then people follow the internal impulse. They want to be angry. They want to run away. They want to uh, hide in the place. So they, they follow the internal impulses. Now this is a picture of vicious cycle or a downward spiral. A vicious cycle, that means a cycle that is going worse and worse. And a downward spiral, it's a spiral that goes down and it goes worse and worse. First, when there is no love, then there is no communication. So this is a marital problem. No communication, they don't talk to each other. And they criticize and then nag. They keep nagging the other person. And then after a while it gets worse, they yell and get disgusted with the other person. And then they avoid responsibilities. They don't want to do anything. And then one day, when uh, uh, generally this happens to a man more often, the man sees a woman outside, he says, this woman is so nice. It's like my wife before marriage. She listens to me, she plays with me, she laughs when I talk to her. She's so happy. And they say, my wife has become such a nagging woman. I don't like her anymore. I want this young girl. But actually, any girl after marriage, they will nag if they don't have the love. They don't have the communication. So we need to understand that. They always need love and communication and care and then the man thinks that if I get another girl then it will be a different picture but very often the same thing happens again then after a while the woman would demand more time more communication and then uh, she will get emotional and angry and yell and nag it's the same thing if the husband doesn't love so if there's no love the marriage will have problem it will go worse and worse and then finally, many, many marriages end up in divorce. So this is a vicious cycle. And then parents and children problems. The children affected by the world because in the world there's a lot of attraction of uh, playing with cell phones, with playing games of uh, rebelliousness, uh, not obeying, obeying the parents. And so there's no communication. And then the parents also 
very often just demand the children to obey. They command the children to obey. They yell at the children if they don't obey. And sometimes they hurt the children easily. So there's no kind, uh, nice communication. And then they yell at each other. The parents yell at the children. And then one day the, ch the children learn to yell at the parents too. And then there is mutual enmity. There is, you know, they uh, hate each other. The children becomes rebellious. They rebel against the parents. And then they mu have mutual enmity. Uh, they become enemy of each other. And the children become problematic. They don't go to school. They don't study well. They, uh, they make, uh, mix with bad friends and all kinds of problems. Uh, and then problematic relationships. So this is a vicious cycle with family and children. And then this is a vicious cycle of how it affects the whole person. When a person has problem in the family, in the marriage and children relationship, what happens is when there is a problematic relationship, then it could uh, lead to financial problem. It, because when there's a problem, then uh, there's not much motivation to work hard and uh, support the family. And then there will be children, family, and emotional problem. And then there is no strength in uh, personal strength, in spiritual strength, and in strength in ministry. And then will become spiritually low and then break down. As a person, break down emotionally, break down in relationship, and break down in uh, ministry. So this happened. Uh, to all people who don't take care of their family and the children. Okay, now next point is God wants to heal our lives. God wants to heal our life. God wants the best to happen to our lives. God wants to heal our, our lives. God doesn't want people to have problematic marriage and problematic um, children relationship. And what happened is this is Satan's way of destroying the family and destroy many people's spiritual life. God wants to do inner healing. Isaiah 61 verses 1 to 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. And then second verse, to comfort all who mourn. Third verse, Verse the oil of joy, joy for mourning. So here it talks about the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. First, this is upon Isaiah, and then this was upon Jesus when he preached. He used this passage, and then it's also on Christians that the Holy Spirit is upon us, uh, and, and then He has anointed us to preach the good news, to first preach the gospel. But it's not just preaching the good news. It also sent us to heal the brokenhearted, the people who are hurt inside. Because family problems cause both sides to suffer. The husband and wife and the children to suffer. So we all need the healing of God. Only after we have the healing of God that we have the joy of the Lord and then we have strength to care for each other, uh, to bring healing to the family and then the family will get better and then, you know, that. So f we first need the inner healing. And then to proclaim liberty to the captives, people who are captured by family problems, by emotional problems. And then uh, that they will be set free. And then to comfort all who mourn, people who are sad, they will be comforted. And the oil of joy for mourning, instead of mourning, that, that, that there can be joy. In the Lord, we can have joy. We can enjoy God all the time. How can we have joy? God is a, jo a God of acceptance. He accepts us and His presence will bring peace and joy. When we trust in God, we say, Lord, you're so wonderful. And whenever we come close to you, you're very happy. You're very happy when we come close to you. Whenever we pray to you, we feel the peace of God. That is your love. So when we understand all these are the works of God, then we realize that God is working in our lives. And God will take away our burdens. So we realize that God is a God of love and God of healing. So when we experience this healing, we'll have more peace and joy. And God says that, Jesus said that, 
when we even give a cup of cold water to a little one, we'll by no means lose our reward. So anything we do for God, God is very happy. And when we love God, He will prepare for us things we have not seen, we have ears have not heard, and what the human mind has not thought of. So He will prepare for us good things. So God always remember anything we do for Him. And whenever we love Him and pray to Him, He is very happy and will for sure bless us. Now people are not like that. People don't have the ability to have such strong love. And people don't have the ability to bring inner healing. So the inner healing has to come from God. But God can use people to bring inner healing. So first, we all need the inner healing. And then we can be healed and then we can help other people. Okay, so the first thing we need to learn is how not to be affected by problematic family members. Sometimes we have family members who get angry easily, who are emotional, who doesn't talk. So first, how not to be affected by them so that we have the joy of the Lord, so we have the strength of the Lord. There are often even strong Christians when they are in a family with problems, then he starts to lose joy. So we need to come back to the Lord and have this joy restored to us. First, we need to accept the sinfulness of people and not to be affected by them. That people are sinners. In Jeremiah 17, 17 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So the heart of all people is desperately, uh, is deceitful and desperately wicked. But some people will say, no, my heart is not so bad. But we, as human, we always find ways to tell lies, to get things our way, to get what we want. It's only after we became a Christian and if we love God that we are willing to put down these things. If not, we still want to tell lies and get what we want. When we mature in Jesus Christ, the more we respond to the need of people and love people, the more we can care about people and influence them. And then God is very happy with us. So we need to understand that the heart is deceitful, that we are, you know, that uh, people are deceitful. So we, we don't take them seriously. Uh, you know, as sinners, sinners just don't stop making people feel bad. Sinners have the tendency to make people feel bad. They cannot stop it. They keep doing it. They keep making people feel bad. Okay, and then um, this is uh, this passage here in Psalm 37, verse 7. It tells us how to take care of our emotions, to take care of our emotions and not be affected by people. It says, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. So this passage talk about sometimes people, uh, sinners, wicked people, they get things their way, and then we are unhappy. So this verse says that be still before the Lord and wait patiently. That be still in front of God and just wait on the Lord. Wait for the Lord to do things and just have a close relationship with God. Do not fret. Do not be anxious. Do not be unhappy when people succeed in their ways. It's their problem. Uh, if they have problems, if they have sins, and they might be successful. But God knows that, knows our heart. He knows uh, uh, what we uh, he knows that if we love God, He knows and He knows that people are causing us problems. God will bless us if we follow God. So do not be affected by them and do not be anxious when they carry out the wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. So when we are anxious and angry, uh, then it only leads to evil. So when we see people having problems, we just say, it's the problem. I don't have to feel bad. I just say, Lord, the Lord will, will bless me. The Lord is nice to me. The Lord has blessed me all the time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we need to learn to get good things from God. So we have strength to treat people nicely. And then when, people, when we treat people nicely, then we can build up the marriage. 
Now for me and my wife, I really work on making the relationship better. I always uh, treat her very nicely. I never want to hurt her. And it's the same for her too. She treats me very nicely. She loves me a lot because we want to build a good marriage that we can enjoy and also a marriage pleasing to God. When we are pleasing to God, then God will bless our whole life. So we don't want to do anything that hurt each other. And then when there is any problem, we just talk about it. It's, it's no problem. It's just talk about it and find a solution. But many people don't want to talk about solutions. They just get angry. You didn't do what I want. They just look at what the other person didn't do instead of saying, uh, I, I should, you know, I should uh, not be affected by people. I should, I should just uh, be nice to the other person. So I hope that we all learn this, that we don't get, a, uh, that we're not affected by the problematic people in our family. And uh, here down below, God has planned great blessings for us. No one can take away his blessings except ourselves. So even if our family members don't treat us nicely, God, uh, they cannot take away our blessings. If we follow God, they cannot take away our blessings. And if someone is wicked, it's their problem. If I am affected by him, I will lose God's blessing. So sometimes I know that it's unfortunate. Some people, their family members are always angry and take advantage of other people and they never want to change. It's a difficult situation. But still, God has the ability to bless us if we love God and follow God. It's a difficult situation. But we need to learn to say what he says is it's not positive, and I call it garbage. Now, he's not garbage, but the words, the negative words he say is garbage. So this garbage, I don't want to take. I don't want to take his anger. I don't want to take his negative things. I just want to relax in God, enjoy God, and then not be affected. Understand that all the negative words came from Satan. And then warning to people who don't take care of the, the problems. So if people don't take care of the problems, then uh, there can be more problems. Okay, James 1.19 So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So what it says here is that we should be swift to hear. We want to... Uh, Anytime we want to listen to people and slow to wrath, slow to be angry uh, and slow to speak, don't talk too much. And uh, if we want to say something, uh, say it clearly and to the point. We don't have to keep talking. Some people talk too much or yell at people too much or nag too much. And we want to be slow to anger because the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. The anger of men only produce negative effect. If we uh, let, the, let anger control us, it will affect our whole spiritual life. So uh, first point here, God blesses everyone who seek His righteousness, His kingdom and His righteousness. And if people get angry and hurt other people, they are not seeking God's righteousness and they will lose God's blessings. So if people, they are angry easily, then what happens is they're not seeking the righteousness of God and then they will lose God's blessing and the meek shall inherit the earth. So we want to follow God only and not to be affected by people. So if we are affected by people, then the anger will affect us, affect our whole life. Okay, now what people say will just stay in the air for one second. They will just stay in the air for one second. And then uh, we don't have to take the negative word seriously. It, it will go away. What they say will go away. And, uh, and when God will bless us, bless me when I obey Him. When I listen to God and don't take negative words seriously, God will pay me back. God will bless me. So we need to clear the God negative words from our mind and fill ourselves with God's Word. So if some family members or some other people always yell at us and say negative words, uh, we want to clear the garbage as soon as possible. Even when they are yelling at us, we'll say, if I have something wrong, I'll say sorry. But if I don't, I don't have to take it seriously. I can just say, okay, I'll, I hear you. I'll try my best. I'll do what you uh, 
you know, what is right. Uh, I will uh, try to be nicer to you. I'm sorry if I haven't done any, you know, done something, uh, done, done it well. If I have not treated you nicely, please forgive me. So even when the other person is yelling, we can be uh, gentle and uh, don't take it seriously. Let me share with you an experience of mine. There was one person who doesn't accept the work of the Holy Spirit. And one time he uh, asked a pastor that we bo both of us know, and the three of us, and then he talks to me, this person who doesn't work, accept the work of the Holy Spirit. And he kept accusing me, pointing, you know, uh, saying things that, that he doesn't accept. And from the way he talks, I think that he won't listen to me. He just keeps talking for a while. And internally, I realized that it's hard to change him. I chose not to answer back all his accusation. And uh, after a while, when he finished, I just say, okay, thank you, God bless you. Uh, and then he left. And then the pastor uh, said to me, Pastor, you, you really something. You, when the other person yelled at you, 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 didn't, you didn't get angry. You didn't respond with nasty words. You, you still keep calm. And I said, because I, I choose to keep myself in a peaceful way. I want to follow God. I want to obey God and glorify God. And I noticed that He doesn't accept certain works of the Holy Spirit and He didn't give me a chance to explain. So I just listen and don't take it seriously. So I clear the garbage. And after I leave the place, I just say, okay, no problem, no problem. He doesn't accept that. It's, it's his problem and then I just went away in peace so I hope we all learn to be in peace even when someone yells at us we say it doesn't matter so we need to clear all garbage from people and ourselves all the time we want to clear, the, clear all the garbage how people hurt us and criticize us you know when they hurt us or criticize us they, it won't stay the words don't stay unless we let the words stay what they say will go away in the air. But if we let it stay, then we'll be affected. And then how we ourselves are affected, and then we dislike ourselves and despise ourselves. This is our own low self-image after someone yelled at us and then we are affected. And then how we criticize ourselves and have no hope. And then we say, well, I have no hope. Uh, it's too bad, too bad. You know, then we are creating garbage for ourselves. So people give us some garbage and then we multiply the garbage. So I hope we all learn to clear the garbage. When people say things negatively, it's their problem. I let go, I let go. So our own sadness here, this picture here, our own sadness or people's anger, then we want to clear all this garbage. We don't want to keep it. Okay, God has given me this five step to victory how to overcome sins or how we are affected by people or anything negative. The first is aware, aware of how we are affected by people, that we are affected by them and then believe that what, when we are affected by people, it is destructive. It hurts us. It will make us angry. It takes away our peace, takes away our strength. So I will apply biblical principle to the problem. What does the Bible tell me to do? The Bible tells me not to fret because of wicked people, uh, not to take things seriously. And all you who are weary and burdened, come to Jesus and Jesus will give us rest. So Jesus, the Bible tells us to put down all the burdens and have peace and joy from the Lord and bless people and forgive them. So that's the biblical principle. And then we we'll pray to have forgiveness and strength. So. God, please forgive me if I had anger. Please wash away my sin and give me strength so I can treat the person nicely. And then choose to obey God. Choose to, to be nice to the person. Then some people say, well, I'm just always nice to him. He will not change. First, I want to say, when we're nice to people, that's the best way to change people. Secondly, even if we get angry, it doesn't help the person to change. 
And the way to help the person change is to use kind words instead of use anger, words of anger. Now I will talk about that, how to change people. But first we are not affected by people that we have joy and peace and then we are not affected by the person. And then we can overcome sins by stopping the sinful thoughts before they become action. So whenever we have any sinful thought, someone affects us and then we get angry, we want to yell back, we want to stop it when we are aware of the sinful thoughts, the anger. And then we say this is destructive. And then what does the Bible say? The Bible say that we forgive and we don't fret and we have the peace of the Lord. And then we pray, Lord give me strength, forgive me if I've done anything wrong, forgive me and give me strength. And then I choose to say something nice to the person. Now I want to uh, share a testimony of someone uh, who share about uh, her her father since she was a child the father has always yelled at the children and beat the children and uh, say negative things and take away the money from the home and do all kinds of bad things in the family and the wife and, the, and, and this daughter always have anger toward the, the father but then later she became a Christian and she experienced the love of Jesus and the, the love of the Christians and then the Holy Spirit moved her to accept her, her father. It was difficult. And uh, so one day when the father yelled at her, uh, she just um, didn't yell back. And she, you know, stayed in peace. And uh, next day, next time when the father yelled at her, this time she, she'll be loving you know, thinking about the blessings of God and all the good things of God. And then, and then she just laughed. I mean, not a long laugh, but a, just a, a short laugh and oh, very happy. And the sister saw that she was laughing when the father yelled at her and the sister couldn't understand. And then later, she, when the father is angry, and then she go behind the father and massage the father and say, oh, this is not good for you, the anger is not good for you, oh, just calm down, it's better for you. And so she, step by step, she overcome that. And, and one day she could lead the father to Jesus and be nice to him. And, uh, and she overcome her hindrance. One time when she was walking with the father on the street, she, she said, ah, uh, you know, she has a she she wants to hold on to the arm of the father, but she has this resistance. But she say, oh, it doesn't matter. I'll do it. It will build up the relationship. And then she, she hold on to the father's arm. So that builds up the relationship. And then later when the the father was in the hospital, that she decided to kiss the forehead of the father uh, to be nice to him. And then the father became nicer and nicer to them. So it, and then also he became a Christian. So this is wonderful that through uh, love and care and not responding to anger with anger, but to love that we can uh, overcome problems in the family. Okay, now the next step is, so now we talk about how we take care of problems. The next step is how can we overcome the problems in the family? So what can we do? First, only love can heal a relationship. Only love can heal. First Peter 4, 8 And above all things have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. So have strong love, fervent love for one another. Only love can cover a multitude of sins. It will cover, it, in a way, even though when there is a lot of sin, uh, problems of sin in the family, it will change the situation and there will be more and more forgiveness and more and more righteousness in the family. Like in this picture, the husband massaged the wife, that we can massage family members and make them feel happy. And then here, the wife hands the garbage to the man. The man can say, oh, I'm very happy to do it. I'm very happy to clear the garbage. So that's one way to show love and only love. 
can change the relationship. And then willing to admit our faults and say sorry. James 5.16, confess your transgressors to one another. So if we have done anything wrong, say sorry. Say sorry and I care about you, I love you. These are very powerful words. If we say it out of our heart because we want to follow God, follow God's way. When we love each other, that's God's way and then it will bring healing to the family. So be willing to say sorry for anything we've done wrong. Can you do it tonight? When you go home tonight, can you say sorry to your family members and do some action of love to bring healing to the family? And willing to forgive what they've done wrong. In Matthew 6, 14 to 15, For if you forgive men that transgresses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men that transgresses, trespasses neither will your father forgive your trespasses so if we don't forgive other people God will not forgive us either so we want to forgive people and uh, the way to forgive people that the secret here is very important understand that people hurt others because they have been hurt by others many people who hurt people uh, as a habit because they have been hurt by people because they've been hurt by people many, many times. So they keep hurting people. So when some people yell at you, you pay attention to them. These people are full of anger, full of frustration. You can see wrinkles on the face. You can see that they have been hurt by people many times and they took all this hurt into the heart. So that's why they have this uh, the tendency to hurt people. So we learn to have compassion on them. We learn to have compassion on them and be willing to bless them and forgive them. We say, well, they, uh, they have been hurt by people, so they have a difficult life. Therefore, I want to forgive them. I want to have compassion and, and bless them. And then keep managing our hearts until we can step by step forgive them. Sometimes we may not be able to forgive them right away, but we take, do it step by step. So first manage our heart that we have more peace in our heart more joy, more calmness, more acceptance. And then we learn to say, well, he's suffering because people have hurt him. So I pray for him to ask God for wisdom. How can I bless him? How can I make him feel better? And then, uh, and then gradually we can bless him and forgive him and our life will go higher and higher. Okay, now here it talks about how to talk to each other. First, words of grace. Words of grace are words to bring blessings, uh, nice words to people that make people feel good. So we can say things like, I care about you, I love you, I appreciate you, all the things you've done are wonderful to me. I say that to my wife all the time. All this I say, I love you and I say, I appreciate you, you have done so much for me, I thank you so much, I appreciate you. And you are precious to me. And thank you for everything. You are very helpful to me. You have done well. So we're saying you are doing well. You, you are a good person. You have done something good in my life. You are great. You are a great person. You have tried very hard to do things. I noticed your improvement. You have imp imp impacted my life. Uh, you have done something that affect, affect my life. You have many gifts and many strengths. You have many spiritual gifts and you have many strengths. And God likes you. And God will use you greatly. So we say things that are positive. Now these things we say not only to the spouse, but also to children, to our children, that we want to say things positively so we can affect them. Okay, now we need to say words of law also because, you know, we need like to... Uh, sometimes ask the person to clear the garbage or do things with us. We need to ask the person to do something too. But then we don't need to yell. We don't need to hurt the other person. But we can, uh, s we can say in a way to make the person feel good. So first we can say words, of, uh, words that explore and guide. So we can say, how can we improve or uh, solve this problem? We have this uh, problem, how can we solve it? Do you think our relationship can improve? 
I think we can our relationship can improve. Do you think it's possible? And what can we do? So we can ask the person, what are some possible ways to work on this? What are some possible ways to solve this problem? And then, uh, do you want to have better communication with me? So instead of saying, you never talk with me, and then we can say, do you want to have better communication with me? How can we talk better? Okay, teaching. Now, even when teaching, we can guide. Isn't it better that we can talk positively uh, instead of negatively? Can we you know, say things in a positive way? We appreciate each other. So this is a teaching, but in a way it's using questions to guide the other person. It's, this is a very helpful way to guide the other person with questions. And can we appreciate each other more? Can we appreciate what each other has done? And then requesting, would you help me wash the dishes? So, so requesting, instead of commanding, we can request someone to do something for us. I really appreciate if you would help me. And rebuking. So sometimes we need to tell people that they've done wrong. When you talk like that, how do you think the people would feel? So we're asking the person, but using questions. You notice that all this is using questions. Instead of saying, look at how you talk, you're hurting people. Instead, we'll, we'll say, what do you think the people, how do you think, uh, what do you think the people will feel when you talk like that? So we uh, let them know the problem. So when we, uh, you know, uh, when we have to handle certain problems, so first we can explore and guide. It's very important to remember these ways that we explore. And so how can we do better? How can we have a better relationship? How can I treat you better? Uh, how can we... Uh, build up a better marriage and then teaching is do you think if we appreciate each other more it would be better do you think if we help each other and everyone do chores at home would it be better so instead of telling what to do it's asking would you think this is better but actually it's a teaching and requesting will you please wash the dishes with me will you please do this for me and then rebuking, sometimes we need to do that. But we want to reduce the amount of rebuking. We can say, what do you think I would feel when you talk like that? And uh, what do you think uh, will happen if we talk to the children like that? So these are words of the law well, that we can speak gently. This is very, very helpful. Now some people say, I never want to talk like that. It's too much, too much, too much work. But this is, you know, something we want to improve. If we want to improve our life, if we want to our life to go better, we need to improve. We need to pay attention to, to our life and say, uh, if we keep responding to uh, with our emotions, then our life will never go better. So we need to learn to, uh, to improve, to do something that is not natural in our sinful nature. Our sinful nature naturally we want to respond with anger and say words that might hurt people so this is our sinful nature's response but we want to respond with our with our new nature that we want to guide a person and say nice thing and oh you're doing that i appreciate you very much that you're doing something nice to me i thank you very much okay now so how can we guide a spouse or children to change with god's grace so with god's grace so we can say, I'd like to have a better relationship with you. Would you like to too? And do you think we can have a better relationship? Is it possible uh, that we can talk to each other more? Imagine how it will be when we have a better relationship. Now this is creating a picture. Imagine how it will be when, you, uh, when we talk to the children. We can say, I imagine how it will be when you study and then you, you work hard and then you do better and better in school. Can you imagine what will happen? Or we say to the, hus uh, the, the spouse and say, uh, can you imagine if we, uh, our relationship goes back to the same condition as we had before the marriage? Then it creates a picture, imagine. And then for how can we have a better relationship? So this is the way, how can we do it? And appreciation. I like it very much when you help me. So I like it very much when you do some, something. So this is uh, first saying, I like to have a better relationship. 
and do you think is possible? And then imagine the picture, and then how can we reach it? And then I like it very, and, and appreciate you when you do something like that. So this few steps, I hope you remember. It doesn't have to follow the steps, but remember these possible ways. First is, uh, is it possible? Do you think our relationship can improve? And oh, uh, first say, I like to have a better relationship. And then do you think our relationship can be better? And then imagine the picture, how it will be when we have a better relationship. And then how can we do it? And then I appreciate it when you put effort into it. And we want to pay attention not to remind people of the bad behavior. We don't have to keep telling them, oh, you've done wrong, you've yelled at me, you've been angry, you nagged me so many times. We don't have to remind them of that because actually we have done something wrong too that caused them to respond, uh, react like that. And then don't accuse them. So accusation will, cause, will bring opposite effect. Very often people will say, you didn't do it, you didn't do it, you never listened to me. They will just keep you know, uh, shutting the, the ear to what we say. They just don't want to talk. If we keep saying, uh, you, you're not listening to me. But instead, we can say, I'll be very happy if you listen to me. I have something important to share with you. I'd like to hear your, your feeling about it. And then, so don't accuse them in order to change them. Give them positive reinforcement. When they've done anything good, we we'll say, you're wonderful, you're improving, hallelujah. And then, sincerely love and do good to people. Luke 6.35, but love your enemies, do good, and lend, hoping for nothing in return and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for He is kind to the unthankful and evil. So love your enemies, be nice to them, even when your family members are not nice to us, be nice to them, do good to them, and lend and give money, lend money to people uh, not expecting something in return. Now this verse, of course it doesn't mean uh, forever we lend money like to gamblers, we, we make sure that the person is responsible for the use of money. But when people are in need, we want to be willing to give them money to help them. And then our reward will be great because you will be the son of the Most High and He is kind to the unthankful and evil. Because He is always kind to people even when people are uh, unthankful and evil and they are not responding to God. God is still uh, nice to them. God still loves them. And then in the family, it's very important to submit and love one another. Now, very many husbands always say to the wife, you have to submit to me. But actually, the verse before that, it says submit to one another. Ephesians 5.21, submit, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Wives, submit to your husband and as to the Lord. 25, husbands, love your wives just as Christ has loved the church and gave himself for her. Verse 29, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. So in a relationship, in a family marriage relationship, we want to submit to another, one another. That means we'll listen to the wife, listen to what they have to say, what they, their feelings, their needs, their problems, and Responding, responding to their needs, not just saying you have to submit, you have to do what I want you to do. That the Bible, even though the Bible talks about wives submit to your husband, uh, but it also talks about submitting one uh, to one another. Now, why does Paul here only tell the wives to submit, even though actually the verse before says submit, submitting to one another? Because wives have a strong sense of responsibility. So very often they will take over the family, they will say things have to be done this way and they feel very unhappy when the husband doesn't do it. So they uh, have a tendency to dominate the family. So because they love, they, they, they have a stronger tendency to love, but they have a stronger tendency to take over. So Paul remind women to submit to your husband, but at the same time the husband will submit to the wife. That means to listen to the wife. And then for husband, we love our wives just as Christ has loved the church and gave himself for her. 
for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it. So we want to love the, our wives as Jesus has loved the church. Now some people say, they're not, they, they, that's too much. They're not willing to do it, but they just want a wife to submit. Do this, do that, do that. And all day long, the wife is just like a servant doing uh, all the things. Uh, so we want to be loving to the wife and understand how difficult it is for her to do all the house chores and help her when we have the time. And actually, it's a good time to build up the relationship. Uh, now, usually it's me who wash the dishes, but whenever my wife can, because she is very busy in school, she will help me. And then she takes it as a time of communication, a time we talk to each other. That is not just a time of working, it's a time of, of uh, building up the relationship. So it's very important that we see that the relationship is very precious because God is a God of relationship. In the kingdom of God, it's all in one. He loves us and He wants uh, us to love Him and love each other. So He wants a family of unity, of care, of, of uh, communication. And in the family, He also wants us to love one another and care for each other and listen to one another and respond to one another instead of just requesting, uh, uh, wanting the other person to do things our way. So we understand that it's not just the husband wanting the wife to submit. When the husband is willing to love, the wife is more willing to submit. And then, very important to understand that relationship is more important than matters. That things are done right. Is it more important or is relationship more important? For instance, some, uh, someone may yell at the spouse or the children when they break something. They say, you, you broke something again. They need to realize that the relationship is more important than the things they break. So then, then they will say, it's okay, we'll be careful next time. So it's very important to keep the relationship because keeping the relationship will glorify God and bless each other and each person will enjoy more. Okay, and then, so here are ways to build up the, the relationship. Five languages of love. Uh, these are, you know what, uh, there's a book on this, Five Languages of Love that tell us how we give love and how people experience love. First is words of affirmation. I love you, you're precious and important to me. What you did to me is wonderful, I'm happy to have you. Uh, so all these are words of affirmation to affirm the relationship, to make the other person feel good. And number two, quality time. Concentrated in relationship, no cell phone or TV. So time together to communicate and encourage each other. And then three, giving gifts with the heart to bless the spouse. And it doesn't have to be expensive gifts. It's, it's just thinking of the other person. When we see something good, we buy it for the other person to make the person feel good. And then acts of service, helping in small and big things. Helping, uh, like if your spouse drops something on the floor, pick it up for him or her. Instead of saying, you drop it, you pick it up. We can do it for them and for our children too. We are willing to do things. At the same time, we want to train our children to be willing to take up the chores at home. And physical touch, touching, hugging, kissing, these are ways to convey love. We notice that animals like to be touched too. As humans too, we want to be loved and, and touched. And so these are ways, and you can do an exercise with your spouse and with your children too. You can ask them to write down the order that they want, what is most important to them, that, uh, that they see that as an action of love. And each person will be different. But generally, women treasure words of affirmation and quality time more. Women treasure these two more. They treasure the words of affirmation, uh, appreciation, uh, words of love and quality time, the time that they are together. Now I hope that you here, you will spend time with your spouse and children. 
that you will allow time. Now, some people they don't allow time for that. They, they just you know all day long they do things they want, and then they might watch TV and do other things. Instead, we can have some time with the spouse and the children to go out and do something to have, uh, to have fun and build up the relationship. And gifts can be a you know any kind of gifts and acts of service that we help the other person and touch. So males and females are different uh, in what they want most. So uh, one person will write down what I want most. Uh, what I read, uh, what kind of action I read as action of love. And then number two, they will write down what do you think, uh, uh, what we think the other person like most. What does he treasure most? So we put down what I treasure most. Uh, these five things, they put it in order. Which one uh, is um, what I treasure most? I put number one, number two. And, uh, and then I think the other person treasure this more. Now for me and my wife, we did it and we both guess it right for each other. So because we know each other very well so I know now for her that what she likes most is quality time uh, that is a language of love for her and for me physical touch just touching hugging uh, that to me is it's action of of love okay this concept of the love bank now when we go to the bank we deposit money and then we take our money but we can only take out as much as we have put in. We cannot take more than what we put in. It's the same for love. What do we deposit? Do we deposit love, care, help, listening, support. We deposit this to build up the relationship. And then what do we get? We get love, care, and help, listening, and support from the other person. If a person don't put in love and care, he won't get love and care back. On the long term, the relationship would have problem. So if we want to get more love and care, we want to give more. Now some people say, I have loved you more than you love me. So you love me first and then I'll love you more. That's counting. You have done so much. I want you to do more before I'll do more. So I hope we all say, I'm willing to love. Love is being willing to love. And then when we're willing to do that, God is very happy with us and He'll bless us and He'll reward us and he'll make our marriage go better and better and love and, satis and satisfy your spouse now here is a picture of some weddings after the wedding they wash each other's feet showing that they want to care for each other so can we uh, have this concept also that we want to uh, serve each other in a marriage not just serve uh, not just have the other person serve me but I want to serve the other person too and we want to uh, massage or do things that make the other person feel happy Proverbs 5 18 let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth now the fountain here is uh, represent the wife so let your wife be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth and rejoice with her make her feel happy and make her uh, bless her life so that she she uh, gets what she wants she she's satisfied with the relationship so in the marriage there's an element of loving and satisfying the spouse make the person feel happy now many people when they marry they just want something back or they just want things to go normal you know we just eat and wash dishes and cook and work and earn money and every day they sit there but then it's no exchange of love so I hope we do things to make the other person feel happy. Uh, God makes us happy, and in heaven we'll be, we'll all be happy. So uh, it's not just uh, doing our duties in our life, but we can make each other happy, and then we can enjoy the relationship, enjoy life on earth. And then to change someone is the low efficiency way is to accuse and yell and have bad attitude and nag and does not listen and teach too much 